Hey everybody! Um, you said that some of you said you were interested in just uh, getting updates on this um, AM transmitter that I'm putting in the Philco. I'm uh, oh, sorry, RCA Model 50. So um, this is just a short little update. So I'm kind of just laying out how I'm going to build this thing. Um, if you remember in my previous odds and sods video, I mentioned that I'm going to use a solid state rectifier. Um, I think I'm going to change that, and I'm going to use a traditional 5Y3 here. And, um, and I'll explain why I'm thinking like that. So, um, just for starters, uh, this is nothing connected, right? It's all just placed here. But um, it gives me a good layout of what I think we're going to have. So, like, for example, this is going to be the 6SK7, which primarily connects to the tuning cap, right? So that's close proximity. This will be the, uh, the 6L6 right here, the output tube. This will be the choke. This will be the, uh, the rectifier, and this will be the uh, capacitor. I do have a multi-can capacitor that I've ordered for this, and I'm going to have all of my caps right here. And uh, it's convenient because everything is close to the power section, which is right here. This transformer is from a Philco 84, and um, it's, uh, I actually built a, 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 it's a sacrilege, I know, but I built a guitar amplifier out of a Philco 84, so this is the original amp, uh, original transformer that came with it. Actually perfect for this, um, and it's something that I had never considered before, using an antique radio transformer for something else. Um, but uh, looking at the specs on this thing, I mean, it's perfect. So, um, so what I did a little while ago is I connected this to the breadboard and just did some testing and make sure that it's correct. Um, and there's one thing I do want to show you about this transformer, which is interesting. Let me take this stuff here off of here for a minute. So looking at this transformer, this is why it's important that you check and double check and triple check things. So when I first took this transformer and decided I'm going to test it, I looked at these wires and said, oh, yeah, these are black. These are probably the power. That's, that's traditional for a transformer. And um, I took a look at these these here, these white wires, and I said, okay, that's got to be my 5.3 volt, um, my 5.0 volt. And I looked at these, um, these, these green ones, and I thought, okay, that's my 6.3, no center tap, we're good. And then I said, okay, these must be my high, uh, my whole high voltage lines. So I connected everything, brought it up on the Variac, um, and I actually connected my power to these filament lines. And I only brought it up to like one volt. And as soon as I did that, I felt a buzzing in the Variac, shut it right off. So then I said, okay, that's not, something's not right. We're going to blow the transformer up. So I went on uh, Nostalgia Air, looked up the schematic for the um, 84. And lo and behold, they do have it identified that the power, the 120 volt on this um, transformer, is actually white right here. So, um, so it's white. Then I remembered this loop. And I remember when I worked on one of these that they actually had a gimmick uh, going from the power, this actually goes right, went to the volume control and they had a gimmick there and that's why there's a loop in that wire. So um, I now have everything marked appropriately. This is the 6.3 filament, this is the 5.0 um, rectifier, this is the high voltage and this is the 120. So what I'm gonna do, um, I am gonna take this transformer apart because you could see it looks a little ratty down here. I see a crack in the wire right there and um, I'm not going to take any chances. Uh, I've gotten really good at this, at getting these things back in shape. So what I'll do is I'll wire them uh, with the correct wire so I know exactly what's what. So this will be yellow, the 5 volt. This will be green, the 6.3. This, this will be red, the 120. And then, I'm sorry, the high voltage will be red. And then this will be white and black. So that's, uh, that's a lesson learned on these old transformers. So. What I'll do is I'll take off the uh, the clamshells, everything here. They've got to be painted a little bit, a little bit gringy, and um, I put everything back together. I remember when I did this on the original Philco I worked on, I had to remove these little tabs. They're not remove them, but pry them up. Let me see if I can get you a little closer here. So on these old Philco transformers, there's a little tab here on each corner that you have to pry up. And you got to be really careful because if you break it, that's it. That's what holds the clamshell on. So I wanted to share that with you, and uh, let's let's move on to the next thing.
For those of you that never took apart a transformer before, I'll show you this real quick. I, I, I'm pretty sure all of you have, but what the hell. So, um, so basically, this is the clamshell, and you'll see I've got these little pins here sticking up right there. There's little tabs, okay? Those are the tabs that come through the bottom that I showed you have to be pried up. And you just pry them up with a screwdriver, and then you use a, a good ductile plier like this. And you make sure you keep those suckers nice and straight and you don't break them. And then when you put it back together, it's a lot easier. And I did the same thing with the other side, right here. And the thing I'm a little surprised about is, I remember when I worked on the other Philco, there was a piece of cardboard inside here, an insulator. This one has nothing. I don't think anybody's been in here, but there's no, uh, no insulator. And then the way this particular one works is this bottom plate comes off. And you'll see that's where the, um, the wires are basically rubbing here. So um, we're going to take this out of here. Like so. And I'll make sure we put this back on so I don't lose track of what's what. Okay. Then you've got this plate on the other side. Right here. I'm not really too worried if I break these wires because when I, when I fix it, I'm basically going to cut them right around here, right in this area. And I'm going to put new wires in and I'm going to put a piece of, sh of uh, shrink tube and run them out and they'll be nice and pliable and everything will work good. And here's an interesting thing. The, um, the lines that come out here for the... This looks like the high voltage line. They have running across the bottom. Let's see if we can see that. It comes up here and runs across the bottom of the transformer on a piece of cardboard and comes out the other hole. You would think that they would have routed them out this side. Um, but the reason why they didn't do that is probably because it would create noise. Because this is the, the filament line. It would probably create some hum, I would imagine. Anyway. That's, uh, that's what we do. So we'll take this all apart, we'll clean these, we'll paint them, make sure they look good, and then we'll be in business. Alright, that's it for this one. Be back. Just to close the loop on this, I did get the bottom plate off. It's right here. Let's see what it looks like. And the only one last thing I want to cover on this is you never disturb the wires right here where they come out of the windings. Never ever. You try to cut it up here. You don't want to disturb any of this stuff underneath the paper, right? If you do, you might as well throw it out. Okay, I'm really done now. I just wanted to give you an update where we are with this transformer. You could see that I've got the uh, two 6.3 volt lines uh, rewired, and this is the filament, uh, filament, this is the center tap for the 6.3 volt. I've also got the, uh, the two black wires that are going to go to the 120 power, and I've got the 5 volt lines redone. I'm just about to do this high power side and you'll see right here this is why I'm rewiring it because this is exactly on the bottom of the transformer where the hole is and if you bend this enough you'll see there's bare wire in there so we would have had a short so we're going to replace that with a red wire which is customary and we'll make the center tap a white with a red stripe so let me go do that all right just to make sure that I wired this thing right we're gonna we're gonna test it again Make sure it ohms out correctly. I'm going to put this on the ohm scale right here so you can see it. And the first thing we're going to check is the 120 volt side. Let's do that first. Make sure we have a good connection. 9.5 ohms. Looks good. Next thing we'll test is the 5 volt. There's no center tap on that. That's the yellow. Right there. Right there. 0 0.4. Looks right. Next thing we'll check is the high, the high side. And I should get about 400 ohms across these two red wires. 410. If I remove one, and you see the center tap here, I had a white wire and I put some red markings on it. If I move one side to the center tap, I should get about 205 going to be a little imbalanced though. 212, 
and if I move this one over here 197 okay that works so I know I have the right center tap and the last thing we're going to do is the 6.3 volt side again we're going to go right across the two green wires 0.05 and if I move one to the center tap 0.03 and if I move this to the other one 0.03 so I know that this uh, transformer is now wired correctly and I didn't uh, mess up any of the wires you'll see that I've uh, twisted all of these together that's mostly for hum to get rid of the hum here's the center tap for the uh, 6.3 volt rail you'll see it's a white wire with green I marked it with a marker and again for the high voltage side is a white wire with uh, red so I'm now ready to put this transformer into the chassis all right wanted to share that with you the next thing we're going to do on this before I start building it if you recall the tuning capacitor needs to be isolated from the chassis if you remember that from the other design that I did has to be isolated now on this one they have it strapped here from the tuning cap to the chassis and they have another connection over here so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut these and uh, I'm going to put my meter on continuity it's going to be a little annoying and we're going to cut that all right so that wire is cut we still have it if we look over here on this side there's also one here we're going to cut that All right, I've cut the two ground straps, and you'll notice that the, uh, the continuity is no longer there. I've got nothing. Now this tuning cap is mounted to the chassis through a pair of uh, rubberized washers, which I'm going to replace because they are old. But essentially now, I have this isolated from the chassis. The same thing has to be true of this tuning wheel right here. It is. You can see we've got zero on the meter. There it is touching the chassis, there it is touching the tuning cap. So we've essentially isolated the tuning cap, which is exactly what we want. Okay? Be back. Alright, I never do unboxing videos, but today we'll do one because uh, it's a special one. So I got this from um, Old 64 Goat. Bill sent it along. Thanks, Bill. So we're going to open this up. See what's in it. I already know what's in it. Those of you that subscribe to Bill should know what's in it too. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. This is the uh, amplifier that Bill got at the garage sale. I love that meter. Check that out. It's got an on-off switch. It's got a dial light. It's got a volume indicator. It's got tone. Phono and record, volume, and something else. And this was for a record cutter, I believe, one of those machines. Let me take it out of the box, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, this is a really old, uh, really old unit. It's got an an 80 and a 45. That's old. Really cool. That transformer is pretty hefty. Let's take a look at that. Look at the size of that iron. Got our output transformers and our chokes. And we've got a 6N7, a 6SQ7, another 6SQ7, and then a third 6SQ7. So it's got three of those. And uh, a number of um, filter caps up at the top. And uh, let's take a look underneath. There you go. It's very clean underneath. Not a lot of stuff here. So here's our transformer. We've got a lot of these old uh, Aerovox capacitors. These are known to be bad. There's a .01s. We've got our four uh, pin tube sockets here for the rectifier, so we don't even have eight pin in this thing. And uh, we got a bunch of these old uh, bumblebee things. This will be a nice little project. There's an eight pin socket right there for those six SK7s, I think they are. Um, yeah, this will make a nice little little guitar amp. So that's what I'm going to do with this thing. So I thank you, Bill, for sending this along. The thing I like the most is that meter. 
I'm definitely going to find a way to integrate that meter into the circuit. Um, so I appreciate you sending this along, and when I start working on this project, I'll make sure I give everybody an update. So, uh, shout out to Bill. Thanks, Bill. And right, I'm going to end this video here because it's getting kind of long. So um, this will just be uh, an odds and sods video. And um, we're going to start working on that um, Bell & Howell amplifier uh, tomorrow. And uh, that's the plan. I will come back with the AM transmitter and let you know uh, how that's going. I'll have to mount the transformer that I showed you, re that I've rebuilt. And um, I'm going to have to move those uh, tube sockets. And I did get the electrolytic capacitor that I said I was going to use. And you can see it's a 40, 40, 30, 30, all at 450 volts. I know the original schematic calls for 247s. So I'm going to use 240s. Then there's a 33 and a 22. And I'm going to use these two instead should work just fine. So that'll be the uh, entire filter cap mounted. But I do need to make sure I isolate this from the chassis as well. right? So typically the way these things work is these are ground lugs here and they ground to the chassis. I'm going to have to make that hole a little bit bigger and put a piece of uh, plastic and mount this to the plastic so that it's isolated. Easy to do. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope everybody's having a great day. Bye.